the Bible says that um, the Father is God, like explicitly it says. And so is the Jesus. Father seeks us to worship Him. In We're back to that one again. God. So when Thomas says to Jesus, "My Lord and my God," how many gods do the Jews have according to the Old Testament? John twenty twenty eight. But Thomas said to Jesus, "My Lord and my God." So when you go there, so yeah, we're back to is. square one. Okay, so what what's the point of telling me? Well, the Father is called God. Jesus is called God too. What does that got to do with the point? All right. So why so why is that? Um, like I've heard like people like Bob say that it's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are equal because they do. Like different jobs of God, yeah, yeah. Um, so the like the equality. What sense equality? That's the thing. When you say equal, like, yeah, you have to define. It's like saying, "Are you equal to your mother?" What way? Uh, you can't say yes or no because you have to ask me. Depends what you mean. Do you have equal authority to your mother? No, she's your mother. You're subject to her. You you are to honor her. But are you equal to her in nature? in essence and value and honor in the sight of God? Yes. Yeah. So that's what Bob the Builder and others mean. When they say they're equal means Jesus and the Spirit are equal to the Father in essence, in nature and glory. But in authority, the Father is head of the Son and the Spirit, he has authority over them. But like, for example, the Father of the house, he's he could kick out, um, I'm under my Father, so if I disobeyed him sure. or said anything or did anything against him, I would be kicked out of the house. Yes. So that would make him more powerful, meaning him God. No, not he could kick out power. Jesus if he said anything against the Father, which he wouldn't do, yeah. but if he did, took no, him even, out of the throne for doing that. Taylor, even your analogy, no, you, you, your father can be 80 years old and you can be a 50-year-old man that's muscular. So no, he's not more powerful than you. He has the authority. He has the power over the household. But again, notice, like authority. House. Notice again, you said it. Authority is not the same thing as power. But when we come to the Godhead, when you say the Father is the, he is the owner of the house. Well, the Bible says everything was created for Jesus. Colossians 1.16. It says all things were made by him and for him. So who's really the owner of creation? They all own it together. But to say, well, he's the father of the house and he can throw out the son. That may work with creatures. It, it cannot work with the Godhead because... Because the Bible says everything was created by the Father, Son, Holy Spirit for the Son. Are you saying that he is even the head of the Father because concerning all things, all rulers and stuff, or anything except for the Father, he is the head of? Because I agree with that. I so you do agree he's the, the head now with the Father then? With the Father. I didn't say above the Father. I made it clear. How can he be the head over the Father? The Father is not part of creation. All things means all things that he created. Remember? All things yeah, that but then I agree with that. I agree totally okay, so, with that because he's the Son of God. Okay. Anything anything that disagrees with the Son would disagree with the Father because the Father sent him to do his work. The Father is his head though. Hey, sure. If the Father said to him, okay... Um, of course I'm the Father like, is his head. Like your Father is your head. But how does that mean that you're less than your Father in power and dignity? Because I couldn't change his word. Uh, like, if he said, um, go and either go and make the coffee or go and make the dinner, or if you're not going to do anything around the house, you can leave. Then can the Father do that to the house? Son? Change the Son's word? Because the Son says, whatever I ask and command, the Father does. So is there something the Son can tell the Father and the Father say no? I don't get what you mean. In John 11, 41 to 44, he says, Father, I thank you for hearing me because you always hear me. Everything I say and ask, you do. So can the Father say no to the Son? Well, he, what about the fact that he's asked and prayed um, and said, um, please spare this cup from me. Um, well, two things he did right there. Done. He asked there for yeah. him to have the No, you're misreading removed. it, Taylor. Taylor, you're misreading. Two things you did. Number one, you created a contradiction. Because even to bring that up, you didn't answer the point when Jesus says, you always hear me. So now you created a contradiction. But because I'm not a Muslim, I'm not going to use this to embarrass you because I don't believe the Bible contradicts. Reread it. You didn't read it carefully. Jesus didn't say, take this cup for me, period. He said, if it's possible, let this cup pass for me, yet not my will, but your will be done. Because if Jesus said, take the cup away from me, the Father would have to do it. Because Jesus said, whatever I ask, he does. So I'm going to ask the question again. If Jesus tells the Father, this is what I want you to do, can the Father say no? If you say... I don't think so. I don't think so if he asks it, but what about the fact when he says that I go back to the Father sure. to ask that he may send the Spirit? It, it doesn't, doesn't say that mean, he will yeah. definitely... No, no, no. That's misreading. You're misreading even the English. May doesn't mean possible it means purpose and result. This is what's going to happen because if I do this, this will happen. If I don't, it won't happen. No, you're misreading May. You're giving too much weight to the May. The May doesn't mean maybe, but then notice Taylor again, if I, you, I agree with you, you again make Jesus contradict himself. Did Jesus say he does whatever I ask? But you're saying no, maybe not. So are you saying Jesus contradicts himself? 
He says, whatever mm -hmm. I ask, he does. John 11, 41, 42. Father, I thank you for hearing me, for you always hear me. Not sometime, but you're now creating contradiction. Maybe means maybe the father won't do it. So that means Jesus is wrong. He says always, not maybe. No, but I agree with that. Then if he's asking for things for us, he will do it. So the father but can never he, say no to the son, asking, right? The father can never say no to the son then. I agree with that. But why would he ask the father as if he won't do it himself? Why doesn't he just do it himself if he... I don't know what you mean. The it's like saying, why did the father send the son to die? Why did the father die? So you're asking me questions that's going to destroy your faith. Okay, let's play that game. How come the father didn't die for you? So Jesus showed more love for you because he became man, died for you, not the father. Why didn't the father do it? You see? So who loved you more, the father and the son? See, when you ask these questions, Taylor, you're actually doing much damage to your own faith. Because I can say, see, Jesus is greater than the father because he loved me to the point of dying for me. The father didn't do that for me. You sure you want to use that argument? Not necessarily. Not necessarily, though, because the father must be great at the send his son. In what the Jesus son said? No, 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 no. Jesus said, "No greater love than this, when a man will lay his life down for a friend." Jesus showed greater love by dying. Did the father die? His spirit did, and um, the son. That's but not. not that's not, yeah, that's, that's not like the, the father. Spirit was within his body. Yeah, the spirit doesn't die. They cannot die. That's, yeah, what th that's not what I meant. I meant like Yeshua was baptized. He had the spirit rested upon him. So who died? Are you not saying the spirit died? That would be blasphemy because the Holy Spirit did not die. No, so I'm not saying the spirit, died. the spirit died, but the spirit was within him. The body died. Okay, so the did the father die? Because it was the spirit that quickened him. Yeah, the, no, the, it was the spirit of God that yeah. risen from the dead. And Jesus and raised himself, Taylor. Quickened. Taylor, you're all over the map. Focus because this is what you do. You go all over the map and you confuse yourself. Jesus raised himself, John 2, 19, 22. The father raised Jesus and the spirit because all three are involved. You keep saying the spirit raised him. That's 1 Peter 3, 18. But the same gospel, John 2, 19 and 22, Jesus said, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. See, this is the confusion on your part because you keep pitting one verse against the other and you create contradiction. The father raised Jesus' body. Jesus raised his body. The spirit did all three to together but that didn't answer the question did the father die on the cross no he did not die you can't say that that's a heresy so if i play your logic the father's greater not as great as the son the son's greater than him can we give up this greater stuff because you're going to create a heresy and blasphemy all oh, the father's greater why because of this well what about this and the son stop and let the bible speak Stop imposing your thoughts. So the father tells the son what to do. The son does it. Amen. But then the son commands the father, not only ask, because in John 17, verse 5, it's not ask, it's a command. He says, now, father, glorify me. That's not an ask. He's not asking. With the glory I had with you before the world was. If I use your logic, you're going to make Jesus greater than the father. So let's stop using our logic and our thinking. Let the Bible speak. We are made in the image and likeness of God. Our spirit is in us. It is us. Like I was saying the other day. Okay, Taylor, How is you know it says male and female are made in God's image. Like right? separate being. Taylor, you are back to square one. You're more confused than ever before. That's okay. Only God can illuminate you. Give up the image part because you're going to make God a male and a female because he says he made male and female nope. in his image. Yes, Genesis 126. Don't tell me no. Yes, it says male and female he made them. Yeah. Okay, I so, agree with that, I'm so does no, God have a physical body? Isn't. Does God have a physical body before creation? I don't know. I don't know because it doesn't say if he's got a physical body or not. Boy, man, you got real serious issues, Taylor. If I have to explain to you he doesn't have a physical body, then we're going to have to go back to square one. You understand physical body means he occupies time and space. How do you occupy time and space when God created time, space, and matter, and he exists before time, space, and matter? How in the world can he have a body? A body occupies space and time. The Bible says God created everything in heaven on earth, the heavens and the earth, all time, all space, all place. That means he exists before time and space. How in the world can you not know that God, by nature, doesn't have a body? Are you talking about flesh body? Or are you no, talking we're talking about, about any shape? kind of body. Even angels have spirit bodies that are not flesh like you and I. Because <laughs> angels are beings that occupy space. They live in heaven. But when God created heaven and earth, that means he existed before there was heaven and earth, that before there was place. For him to exist yeah, before place. Yeah, but shape. Um, that's what I'm asking. How can you, you have shape like when shape requires place and space do you know of any shape that doesn't have a space 
but I don't know exactly what's in heaven for me to. I'm not um, talking about heaven. We're talking about God. Exist there. No, I'm not talking about heaven, brother. Oh my goodness. God, who created heaven before heaven, could he have a shape if there is no heaven and earth, no space for him to occupy? But like I said, I don't know. I don't exist you have in to heaven know. for me to see if the shapes. Taylor, I didn't say heaven. Taylor, let me break it down. This is three times, man. Stop playing games with me. I didn't say heaven. God created heaven and earth. Before heaven and earth, how could God have shaped? Why do you keep saying I heaven? I don't exist before heaven. No, that's what I'm saying. I God does, not you. God does. So if God exists yes. before heaven, how can he have a shape? God existed before heaven, yeah. but I didn't. I and didn't I don't care about before, you. I care about God and his question. revelation. If he exists before heavens and earth, there is no space and place. So what kind of shape could he have? He can't. I don't so, care about you so, and me. We don't matter. Okay, and by, if we're going by a scripture, why does it say that let um, let us make man in our image? You, you're image joking, right? Our shape, our body. Uh, you sure about that? I'm going to embarrass you with that one because he created the female in his image. So does he have female parts? Or? From what I've read in the Bible, it says that he made man in his image. Genesis 1, 26 says man, male and woman. female. Taylor. Don't play games with me. Now you're playing games. You're acting like a Muslim. Genesis I'm not, 1 I'm 26. You I'm seeking okay, and you're being. Because Genesis 1 26. I have to be because we're back to square one three days ago. So you went backwards, not forwards. Genesis 1 26 says, When he made man in his image, it was male and female. Don't misquote 1 Corinthians 11 verse 7. See, you're going too many places, and I'm having to correct your mistake over and over again. Go to the first reference, Genesis 1 26. There it says, the man he made in his image is male and female and told them to rule. We're not Muslims, we're Christians. In the Bible, male and female are the Adam that were created in his image and likeness. That's Genesis 126, 127. What about the first Corinthians thing that you were yeah. talking about um, just a second ago? How women were made in the image of man? No, it doesn't say image of man. man. You even misquote it. it says it was that the woman is the glory of man. It didn't say image of man. Show me where it says that in First Corinthians eleven seven. You misquoted it. For man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of man. Where did it say image of man? So where does it say that woman is the image of man, like you said? Okay, I, I thought it did, but okay. So are you going to say women are not in the image of God? Well, uh, not now because I thought it did say the image. So men, is woman in the image of God? Women, Taylor? Is woman in the image of God, Taylor? Yeah. Okay, so we back back to the same. This is the problem. You keep jumping from verse to verse, and I'm trying to show you that's not how you're going to understand the Bible. In Genesis 1.26, it says, Let us make Adam in our image and our likeness. Let them have dominion. So Adam is them, and then it says male and female. So the female and the male are in the image of God. So does that mean God has female body parts and male body parts? No, because then you wouldn't look like man or woman. So then you now, you now answered yourself, image of God doesn't mean God has a physical or a body. That we resemble that's not what image means in the bible itself tells you what image means you are created in the likeness of god's moral being moral character to share in his rule that's not me saying it that's paul saying it if you go to ephesians ephesians 4 24 to 25 you ready that ye put on the new man which after god is created in righteousness and true holiness so you're being renewed the you who's sinful is being renewed after god in what way are you going to be like god after god righteousness and true holiness and that's why in verse 25 it says wherefore putting away lying speak every man truth with his neighbor for our members of one another now colossians colossians 3 verses 9 to 10 lie not one to another seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him you understand what image means you're going to be righteous like God, holy like God, loving like God, pure like God. The image of God means we reflect God's nature, his character, his qualities, not his physical body or spiritual body. That's not so what when it, it says that he made us in his image and likeness, yeah. he didn't really then. Because you'll see a now we Taylor, will be. did Paul say the image of God is righteousness? Are you twisting my words? See, now you're twisting my words. Now you're being dishonest. No, I'm, just saying, I'm just seeing what you're seeing in the scripture. You're seeing... Now that Taylor, we'll did you hear me say what that we are in the image of God and what it means? So why would you say I'm saying it doesn't mean? Are you lying now? Because I just said clearly and it's recorded. We are in the image of God and this is what it means. So why would you then slander me and say I said so we're not in the image of God? I just told I you we are. You. I'm asking you a simple question. No, you're not. Again. Your question is not to say are you saying we're not in the image of God? I just spent 10 minutes with you, Taylor, saying we're in the image of God and here's what it means. So why would you tell me am I saying we're not in the image of God? Did you no, hear the I'm last thing? I said, are you saying that? 
And okay, Taylor, what does it mean to be in the image of God right now? I'm going to let you answer. What does it mean to be in the image of God? The image of God, I've always thought that was the, the, um, like, the shape, like, not the, really, like, the outline. So that's what you thought, and you have no proof for it. So now what does it mean, now that you got corrected? What does it mean to be in the image of God? I don't know. I, I, that's one. But I just gave you the verses. Asking. Ephesians 4, 24, 25, Colossians 3, 9, 10. They didn't say you're renewed after the image the of the verse. Creator? Does the Holy Spirit have a spirit as well? I don't know what you mean by spirit. What do you mean own like, spirit? Like, well, human beings, obviously, our body is a thing that our spirits held within. Yeah. We go through, it's a, like a recorder, it's recording everything we do, um, experience in the life, and then it goes back to the Father, like Yeshua said. Yeah, that's us. Um, I know, that's, that's us. But uh, the Father is spirit. Jesus, before he became flesh, is spirit, and the Holy Spirit is spirit. So I, that's what I'm saying. Have a spirit. Yeah, I have a spirit because I'm flesh and spirit the father is spirit that's his nature the son the word is spirit before he became flesh and the spirit the holy spirit is spirit that's what their nature is their nature is spirit just like you as a human being you have the nature of flesh the ruach condition itself is the spirit of god that yes gets sent. and what does it mean spirit of so, god it means the spirit that belongs to him right but it's not spirit belong to him yeah, like your so spirit in you saying. let me help you son of god does that mean the Father is the Son because he's a Son of God? I'm not, I'm not asking that. No, no I'm, I'm giving this. that as an they analogy. That. Just like Spirit of God, meaning the Spirit belongs to God, but he's not the Spirit here. Just like when I say Son of God. Son of God means he belongs to God, but he's not the Father. That's exactly what we mean when we say Spirit of God. The Spirit that belongs to God, but he's not the Father. So I mean, I know what you're asking me, and I'm trying to answer it so you can get it. Son of God means the one who belongs to God, but he's not the Father. Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, belongs to the Father, but he's not the Father. So you're confused on what spirit of means. The reason why we call the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is to show he's not the Son or the Father. So the Son is spirit, but we don't call him Holy Spirit. So you don't confuse him with the Holy Spirit. The Father is spirit, but we don't call him Holy Spirit. So you don't confuse him with the Holy Spirit. So the reason why the Holy Spirit is called Holy Spirit, so you know he's not the Son and the Father, even though all three of them are spirit by nature. That's why. So what's um, what's stopping them from being the Son and the Father sharing in the Holy Spirit, meaning the Spirit I don't even know is what, the Spirit of the I don't son even know what you mean sharing in the Holy Spirit. So you're using language that I don't know if you know what you mean. What do you mean sharing in the Holy Spirit? Well, they're one, yeah. They're one in um, the Father and the Son are one. Okay. They're one in the Spirit. And, the and spirit what does it mean, one in the Spirit? Where does it say they're one in the Spirit? Where does the Bible say they they're share one in the Spirit? In the sense that... Um, the Father sent His Spirit to the Son when He was on earth in the physical man. But that's the flesh. Father that came to the Son, or is the Spirit different from the Father? It's the Spirit of God, the Ruach HaKadosh, okay. which the both share in. Okay, sharing in sent. something doesn't mean you're that thing. So you and me, we share in, let's say, to use a bad analogy, we share the same car. But the sharing in the car doesn't mean I am the car, the car is me. So sharing in the Spirit means they're not the Spirit. So possession. Exactly. Possession. Like he possesses Israel yeah. and he possesses the temple and he possesses yeah. the earth, none of which is him. So he possesses the Spirit and the Spirit's not him. He possesses Israel, Israel's not him. He possesses the earth, it's not him. Yes, exactly. Not necessarily because that, that's... I don't care. You saying. can say not necessarily all day, all night. Prove it, Taylor. Chapter and verse. So I've got a quote with this. Well, okay. Can you quote with this where it says Trinity in the Bible? You quote the verse where it says the Father is the Holy Spirit, please. Quote it. It says that the Father seeks us to um, seek, worship Him in um, spirit for the um, for the true worshippers following Him in spirit. God is spirit. Okay, did you hear my question? I didn't say God is spirit. I said, show me where it says the Father is the Holy Spirit. So now you just embarrassed yourself. You're not listening. Give me the verse that says the Father is the Holy Spirit. Not God is spirit because I'm going to embarrass you if I go to the Greek. You want me to quote the Greek? Pneuma ha theos. Now you want to get slick on me and smart? Now we're going to go into the grammar. The Greek is pneuma ha theos. Do you know that the, the Greek here, this is what you call a predicate, predicate nominative? Can you explain what that is? Well, you're the one that's trying to prove okay. a point. So, so in other yeah, words, to... stop trying to challenge me and listen. And I'm learn. not trying to challenge you. Okay. Asking, I was asking hey, questions. You Taylor, kept can we go now? For us. You were asking me and about the Holy Spirit. You were showing your true colors when I came oh, I said you're wholeheartedly done. trying to seek. No, and, you're not, like, Taylor. You've been debating and arguing with me, Taylor. It's okay. Today's you have a bad I've came, I've came to discuss with you okay, and ask you questions. Taylor, what's your next you question? Because we're wasting time now. What's your next question, buddy? Give me the next question because now you're wasting my time. What's your next question? Uh, uh, I'm not wasting your time anymore. See you later. Okay, Taylor. Take care, buddy.